For more than 20 years now, I've been excited about the idea of using innovation to solve problems for players, problems to do with maintaining their instrument or adjusting the instrument. Right now, you can pretty much tune the strings, otherwise you need to take it into a shop for adjustments. Um, this is what I call an ultralight viola. My team and I have been working on it for the last couple of months, my team being Lonnie Marino and Alex Curran. And, um, it incorporates a number of features that I think are, are helpful for, for players. The first one I'll look at is the neck, which is adjustable. You can put an Allen key in here and effectively change your string heights within seconds. And another key lets you change the side-to-side -side inclination of the neck again within seconds, and that'll adjust the relative heights of the top and bottom strings. Chin rests have been with us since the early 1800s. They have great benefit to players, but they do tend to damage the instrument. They dent the side, the, 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 the clamps can distort the ribs. And this instrument, the chin rest clamps are essentially integrated into the lower block where they can't do any harm. And the chin rest effectively floats above the instrument where again, it can't do any harm on a couple of short columns. They can be raised if the player wants a higher chin rest. Indeed, the shape um, is custom made for each client. Also, you'll notice there's no end pin um, and no tail gut. Um, end pins split blocks in, in the long term and, and tail guts stretch and break. This is a, a metal piece inserted into the block and it hooks into the, the um, tail piece and so the dimensions are, are very stable and it's a very robust design. Um, the bridge is in many ways the, the most sensitive part of the um, instrument's acoustics. Very, very small changes to the bridge can make enormous changes to the sound. Um, that can be a, a disadvantage because bridges warp, um, they, the, the, the strings wear into the bridge, it gets cut down. All of these can change the sound as much as the action. I think the ideal is to have a bridge that lasts as long as the instrument and then make sure that we can adjust the rest of the instrument to fit the bridge. This design is a little unusual in that it's weighs less than um, a traditional bridge by getting rid of some of the, the, the frilly parts. Um, this gives a, a, a louder, a brighter, more projecting sound, but of course we don't always want loudness and projection. Um, for this reason there's something I call a micromute. It's a small amount of mass that can be added or quickly removed from the right bridge foot. This allows the player a considerable control over the um, edginess of the sound, the brightness, the brilliance. For example, if you wanted to blend into an ensemble of quiet instruments, you might add a little more mass there. I, I, I um, have planned a series of, of um, color-coded mutes of, of different weights, which can be attached quickly and, and detached quickly, even between movements, for example. I think this does give players a, a significant amount of control over the sound of the instrument. The fingerboard of this instrument um, seems to be a traditional material. In fact, it's, it's not. Violins and violas are traditionally made with ebony, which is now an endangered rainforest wood, so I'm trying to get away from that. Baroque instruments, of course, used ebony or other hardwood veneers on a spruce core. This is exactly what we see here. This, the spruce core is, is showing at the end. Instead of ebony, I've used a new product, a very exciting new product coming out of Switzerland called sauna wood. It takes um, readily available woods that aren't endangered, such as spruce and walnut and maple, and compresses them through a special process. They're, so they retain all their good qualities. You can glue them as you normally would or cut them as you normally would. Um, but they're very dense, they're very durable, and they're very stable. I think possibly they may be an ideal material for fingerboards. This resulting um, sort of Baroque style fingerboard ends up being very light, very stiff, and, and very stable. I so much enjoy working on these instruments, and thank you for listening, and hope to report more as new ideas develop.